AI art generation is a fairly new but incredibly fast-moving new form of artistic expression. Tools like Stable Diffusion allow both artists and non-artists the ability to create and iterate upon high-quality artistic outputs in a matter of minutes. However, what if you want to create AI-generated outputs for animations or games? Most AI art tools are controlled via scripts and web interfaces, which can slow down your creative process when you want to bring those outputs into the next tool in your animation or game pipeline. This is where the Stable Diffusion tools for Unreal Engine plugin comes in. This plugin is a front end for Stable Diffusion that will let you use your editor's 3D viewport to compose both images and animations, which will allow you to combine both the novel artistic styles generated by Stable Diffusion with the quick iteration speed and flexibility of Unreal's user interface and animation systems. This walkthrough will get you up to speed with installing and using the plugin, and will cover some of the new features introduced since version 0.1, including basic plugin usage, creating seamless tiled textures, creating animations with a sequencer, and in painting. Visit the link in the description of the video below to access the plugin's GitHub page. There, you can access the latest release in the sidebar and download the latest zip file for this plugin. Once you have downloaded that, make sure to copy the plugin folder from the zip file into your project's plugins directory. Once you've done that, go back to Unreal, go Edit, Plugins, and search for the Stable Diffusion plugin, and make sure that it is checked. This will add a new entry to the window menu called Stable Diffusion Tools, and once you've loaded that, make sure to go to the Dependencies drop-down and open the Dependencies installer. This will open up a new window that you can use to update all the Python dependencies that the plugin requires. Now, you want to make sure to do this even if this is the first time you're installing this plugin or if you're installing this later on. If there are any problems with installing dependencies, then you can open up any one of the dependency dropdowns to get an individual log for that dependency, and you can go ahead and copy and paste that into the Discord if you have any problems, and we can take a look. Once those are all finished, you will get a pop-up to restart the editor. Make sure to click yes, and we're all done. Now that the plugin is installed, we can go ahead and load our model. First off, make sure in a content browser that show plugin content is enabled so that you can find the presets that come with the plugin. I recommend starting with the Runway 1-5 as this is the Runway Stable Diffusion 1.5 weights. You do need to visit the huggingface.co website and make sure to log in or sign up and accept the license agreement for these weights before you can use them. Once we have chosen our model, we want to click Initialize Model to load it up into the graphics card's memory. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and start creating images. So, down in the Generation section is where most of the meat of the action is going to take place. So first off, we're going to hit the plus button next to Positive Prompts, and we're going to type in a desert underneath a cloudy blue sky. And there we have our image. Nice. So you may find that the image itself may end up a little bit darker. And if that's the case, what we want to do is create a global post-processing volume, set it to infinite extent so it covers our whole level. I want to set the exposure type to manual and the exposure compensation to some number that is appropriate for how bright you want your scene. Now that we've done that, we can play around with some properties such as the strength value, which will change how much the viewport influences the final result. And we can also increase the number of iterations in order to create a more compelling output. We're also going to add in maybe some other props such as a sphere representing the moon as well as a chair that we are going to place in the middle of our desert. You can also add negative prompts. These will be things that you want Stable Diffusion to not add to your image. So such useful things may be prompts like if you wanted to remove people from the output, or if you wanted to remove other undesirable elements. So in this case, I have said that I don't want to see a yellow chair in the scene. So it has taken the chair and it's made something that looks a little bit different. If I go ahead and mute that prompt by clicking on the eye icon, the negative prompt no longer affects Stable Diffusion's output and we get to see our chair again. Let's go ahead and increase the strength value and let's see 
if we get our chair in the desert. As you can see, if you do not specify the actual props themselves, you may not see them show up in the final generated output. So make sure to add a prompt representing the things you explicitly want to see in your composition. Okay, I'm fairly happy with this output now, so let's go ahead and upscale this and save it. If we go to the image outputs dropdown, we can upsample the image. And this will turn our 512 by 512 pixel image into a 2048 by 2048 pixel image. Once that is finished upscaling, we can go ahead and save that as either a texture or an external image. I'm going to save this as a texture for the moment. Let's say you wanted to create some tiling images with Stable Diffusion, and thankfully the plugin makes this quite easy to do. So let's go down and load our model like normal, but in the model options, we want to go down and change the convolution padding from zeros to circular. This means that all textures that are generated will attempt to wrap around the edge of the generated texture, which is very useful for tileable textures. Then we just need to go ahead and initialize our model as normal. Once we've done that, we want to go ahead and set our strength to 1, so we're using no influence from our viewport. And we're going to use a prompt such as a top-down texture of windswept sand. And let's go ahead and generate a few iterations until we find one that we're happy with. Excellent, this is the one I want to keep. Now that I want to turn this into a texture, let's go ahead and upsample it and save the texture. Now that we have a texture, we can easily create a material from it and then go ahead and drop it straight into our scene in order to see our new material. Lovely. Now let's make an animation with the plugin. First and foremost, we need to add a new level sequence. So I'm going to go to the content browser, go to the animation section and create a new level sequence called Desert Demo sequence. Now I can double click on that to open that up and I'm going to need to add a few things first and foremost so we have something to actually render. First off we're going to create a camera cut and we're going to create an associated cinematic camera actor. Then we are going to set the sensor width and height to the same value so we have a nice square sensor to match our 512 by 512 stable diffusion output. We're going to change the exposure settings to manual and the compensation to an appropriate number, just like we did with the global post-processing settings earlier. And then we're going to go ahead and add the cinematic camera to our camera cut and lock the viewport to that camera. Next thing is let's add a little bit of movement to the camera as well. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new transform channel. And I'm going to create a dolly move. So I'm going to go to the location on the x-axis, set a keyframe, and I'm going to just create a short little animation of around about 30 frames or so where the camera dollies forwards a little bit. There we go. Motion set. Now that we have our scene all set up, we want to go ahead and start adding the Stable Diffusion specific tracks. So if we go to the track button and go down to the bottom, we can add a Stable Diffusion generation track. And it'll make this Stable Generation Option section in our sequence. If we go ahead and right click on that and go properties, we can specify the model that our sequence is going to use. In this case, I'm just going to use my good old runway 1-5. Now if we expand the section and the track, we can see we have a number of properties that are keyable. So in this case, our iterations, our seed, and our strength. Most of the time, the ones you'll probably be adjusting will be maybe iterations and strength, and you'll probably want to keep the seed the same across the duration of the entire sequence. Now we're going to add a Stable Diffusion prompt track. You can add as many of these prompt tracks as you want, and for each prompt track with a prompt section inside of it, you can stack these different prompt sections up exactly how you would stack up the different prompts in the main plugin user interface. So for any prompt, you can go ahead and right click on it and go Properties, and you can enter in the prompt itself directly in the prompt field. You can also set the prompt as sentiment, as being positive or negative, which fulfills the same functionality as the main interface usually will allow you by having positive and negative prompts. So in this case, I'm going to add together my 
different prompts that I want, such as a yellow chair in a desert. And in this case, I'm also going to add another prompt saying a yellow cactus in the desert. Because what I want to do with this sequence is I want to start blending between different prompts based on their weight. Now, every prompt section that you add, and every prompt track, you can key the weight of the prompt, which will be how much that it actually affects the final generation. Now, this value can be any number uh, above zero. I recommend, however, one is the default and zero will have no influence on the scene whatsoever. And you can keep raising those numbers above one if you want a prompt to have more influence on your output. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and blend between these two prompts by fading the top one, where I have my chair in the desert, start at one and fade that down to zero. And then for the yellow cactus in the desert, I'm gonna have that start at zero and I'm gonna animate that up to one. I'm also going to add some extra prompts in the background just to help to define the scene a little bit more. So in this case, adding prompts for my daytime moon, as well as adding a prompt for the desert underneath a blue sky. I'm also going to add a prompt to try to add a different stylistical treatment to the scene. So in this case, I'm going to add a prompt to say in the style of an oil painting, and I'm going to animate that up over time so that as we get further into the sequence, it's gonna become more and more like an oil painting. You do need to experiment a lot with these prompts just to see what works and what doesn't. In this case, because I have a lower strength of 0.5, certain types of prompts may not actually influence the scene enough for you to really be able to see a result, and you may have to increase the strength as a result. However, the more you increase the strength, the less coherent the different frames will be. They will start to differ from each other quite a bit. Once we're done, we can go ahead and save our sequence, and then we can go ahead and set our play range. 30 frames is good, we just want to do something nice and quick. And then we're going to hit on the render the movie button. Now what I recommend is we go ahead and we set the preset to the SD movie pipeline config preset, which I've already have set up. And that's going to create our stable diffusion pipeline. We want to go ahead to the output section and make sure we're saving our frames to the right location. And then once we're done, we're going to go and hit render local. This is going to take a while to complete, but what it's going to do now is it's going to step through our entire sequence and render every frame. And for each frame that it renders, it's going to then pass that into the stable diffusion generator. And using our prompts, their different weights, how they change over time, we're going to get different frames that should show an evolving scene over time. So let's wait for this to render and let's see what that looks like. And there's our rendered animation. Now, if you want to make it a little bit smoother, you can take it into some software like Adobe Premiere and add things like frame blending. In this case, I'm using optical flow frame blending in order to make a smoother image. In painting is a very useful feature which allows you to replace elements inside your generated image with elements that you specify via prompts. In this case, I'm gonna replace this model of a cat with an actual photo of a cat instead. I'm gonna select the actor and in my actor layers panel, I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new actor layer called InPaint Target. Now, when I go back to my plugin UI, I'm going to go ahead and choose the Runway 1-5 InPaint model. This is a particular model which is trained on InPainting, but specifically we have a checkbox that's automatically enabled here to allow for in-painting, as well as this custom pipeline field being left blank. If you use normal models, you can use those for in-painting as well. However, you need, do need to make sure the custom pipeline is blank and enable in-painting is checked. Once the model has finished loading, you can see we have a new section called in-paint. This is where you put in the name of the layer that you want to target. Now that we've done that, we can enter in our prompt. In this case, I'm gonna enter in a simple one, just a white cat. And there we go. You can see that the silhouette of the cat has been replaced with a new cat. In painting, we'll also take into account the entire image. So if there are elements behind the actor that you are trying to use as a mask, then Stable Diffusion will try its best to fill in those elements. 
as a result, you can see behind the head of the model of the cat, you can see that our image generation is filling in elements such as the bottom of the pillar and even the pattern of the tiles on the ground. This feature is quite new and is still in testing, so if you have any suggestions or find things that are broken with it, please let me know as I would like to improve it as much as possible. And with that, I think we're done. I am going to be using this plugin myself in the future for creating animations and will be continuously working on it for the foreseeable future. If you have any questions or features or suggestions or anything, or you just want to come and say hi and show what awesome stuff you've been making for the plugin, come visit us in our Discord in the description below. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, you can come by and ask them there and we'll take a look and see if we can help you out. Anyway, without further ado, thank you very much for watching my video and I wish you the best in your AI and Unreal Engine exploits in the future.